more and more about the importance of blended learning in digital curriculum. But when I talk to a lot of teachers, many of them have this idea that all they have to do is just slap a worksheet up on a website and they're good to go. But really it's a lot more than that. Just like our classrooms need to be organized, so does our content. The trick is finding a way to make that digital content organized in a way that's meaningful for our students. There's lots of different ways that we can organize our digital content. What we're going to focus on today is something called a learning management system, or LMS. Specifically, we're going to talk about an LMS called Moodle. Now, Ann Thorpe once described Moodle as a grocery store. Let's say you need to go to the grocery store to stock up on some food. Even though there's a wide variety of things to choose from, I'm just looking for what's on my list. Sometimes I'll need an entire cart of groceries, other times it might just be a few items. The point is, when I need to buy food, I only have to go to one place and find what I need when I need it. You see, the same thing works for Moodle and other learning management systems. It's a way for teachers to organize their content so that students can have access to what they need to learn when they need to learn it. Let me introduce you to Pam O'Brien from REMC7. Pam's the media specialist over at Great Lakes Elementary in West Ottawa School District. And what she does is she uses Moodle to not only organize her content, but also connect with her students whether they're in or out of class. Now, we hope that this sparks some ideas about how you might be able to use Moodle in your own classroom. And as always, enjoy. Moodle, minutes to learn, a lifetime to master. So what is Moodle? Moodle is actually an acronym that stands for Modular Object Oriented Dynamic Learning Environment. So what does that mean? <laughs> it's an internet based learning system that allows teachers to interact with their students digitally. Moodle lets me share websites and files with my students. It lets me give assignments to them and give them feedback and also give them grades. And <laughs> Moodle is free. That's my favorite F word. This explains a little bit about my journey with Moodle. I began using Moodle when I took the position of library media specialist in a kindergarten through fifth grade building just about three years ago. Another library media specialist in my district, her name is Deb Whitbeck, she had just completed the Moodle Academy in Ottawa County at the ISD with Ann Thorpe. Um, Deb told me to, I just had to give it a try. She was very excited about it. I contacted my district administrator. Um, he came over, we met, and after about 15 minutes, I was the administrator of my first Moodle course. So why should you try Moodle? First of all, Moodle has just so many uses. There are all kinds of things that you can share with your students. You can share web links. It allows them to have access to the internet, but in a very controlled way, so you know where they're going and what they're doing there. It lets you share files and documents that you've created. So I can create a template in a Word document. I can put it into Moodle, and then my students can take that template and make it their own. You can also share things like PowerPoints, you can share photographs, any files you can, you can give them to your students. You can create journals in Moodle so that your students can write to you about certain assignments or about what they're thinking. You can create forums, wikis, quizzes, and lots more. You can do it all right in Moodle. And Moodle lets you give your students feedback and grades that they can access wherever they have an internet connection. So if they've completed something, and uploaded it to you in Moodle, you can give them feedback, they can share it with their families and friends, um, they can get to it anywhere where they can get to the internet. As Junie B. Jones would say, plus also, <laughs> Moodle is an invaluable tool for blended instruction. It keeps teachers and students connected, even when students are not able to attend classes. So for example, students who travel, and not just vacationers, but also migrant students, or if students are ill, even though they're not at school, they can stay connected to their class. Moodle can help teachers reach all students. Moodle forums and journals are a wonderful tool for students who need more processing time, or students who are reluctant to verbalize their ideas in front of their peers. Some of my favorite assignments are from students who I've not heard speak very much, but they were able to write and write and write and told me all kinds of ideas. 
Because students upload their work directly to Moodle, you save tons of paper. You don't have to bring their work home with you because when you get home, it'll be there waiting for you. <laughs> Another piece of good news is that Moodle allows you to assign a password so you control who has access to your course. So how can you get started? You should contact your building or district technology director or if you don't have one of those, contact your local ISD. And then you want to decide how you want to organize your course. You can organize Moodle courses by subject, by theme areas, by grade levels. You can use the Glicks. However you want to arrange it, it's up to you. Then decide which resources you want to share with students and which assignments you want to give them. And I guess my biggest tip is that you start slowly and then add more as your knowledge grows. Don't feel like you have to do it all at once. And another tip is that it's helpful and more fun if you can find a colleague to share your Moodle journey with you. I've only shared the tip of the Moodle iceberg. <laughs> to get more information, you can contact Ann Thorpe and you can take her Moodle Academy. There are tons of YouTube Moodle tutorials and there are dozens of Moodle textbooks available.